So the last piece of Engage I want to show you, let me talk about in just a second. We've been doing two classes a week now for what? Two, three weeks, maybe more, I don't know. It's been suggested to me that maybe we ought to take a break for a little bit because two classes a week can get kind of overwhelming. Would anybody like to chime in for or against? Well, I, Greg, it's Cindy. I, I kind of agree, but um, I'd also would like to see if you do two classes, have the opportunity of afternoon classes for maybe one of them. You know, I'm not for sure if that would be up for other people. If not, no big deal. I just knew that we've always had kind of a morning afternoon classes for people like that in the past. And it would just kind of be a, a throw out suggestion. That's all. So uh, and I'm not opposed to that. I just seem to have better participation in the morning. Would anybody else like to weigh in on afternoon classes? Does anybody want to stop now? Does anybody want to keep going? Mm. How many is in the class right now? Well, right now we've got about eight. We've been running about 20, 25. I didn't push this one as hard as I pushed the other one. I'm, I'm having a bad connection today. I don't know if it's at your end or my end. A lot of static. Well, you sound pretty good on our end, so. Okay. I'm gonna guess it's you. Well, what I might do is skip next week and uh, let's get back at it. I think spring break is next week and I think uh, St. Patty's Day may be coming up maybe. And uh, let's start the week after that then. If anybody wants to say different, let me know. But otherwise, I'm going to keep pushing on. Hey, Greg, I'm getting a lot of the static too. I think it might be you. Is your shirt rubbing on your mic, maybe? Move that. Yeah. Is it just the. Can you talk to your microphone? See how it sounds? You guys hear Elena? Yeah. Does she sound all right? Oh, no, I didn't hear her at all. Can you hear me? Yes. Still I did. Okay. Do I sound better now? Yes. Yeah. I don't hear it anymore. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll keep trying to do better. I move around a lot because I'm looking over my shoulder. So we've been talking about engage. And we've been talking about drip emails. And we've been talking about emails that are already constructed for you because um, those are the easiest for you guys to do. What I'm going to attempt to show you this morning, and I say attempt because I was playing with it quite a bit, is a way for you to take and email all your sphere a what's called an email blast or an email that's more designed by you. And we're going to try to look at them and see if we can make it easy or easier and then go from there. So to get into your engage campaigns. And you see there's this one thing called email blasts. Well, mine has some stuff in it because I've been messing with it for a while. But let's open up that email blast. And you're going to see that I have a happy birthday email or a blank email waiting for you to create. Well, to do this properly, you've got to first have a campaign. In this case, the campaign is named email blast. And then second, you have to have an email over here that you want to use to send your clients. Now, this company does not make it easy. You have to use an email that I've created for you and then edit it to put it back in the email blast. So you'll see all these emails that are automatically put in here when you bring it in. Hello? Hello. Hello. Somebody turn on their microphone. Please mute. Please, please, please. 
If you're not talking, please mute. Okay. So you would go into my emails and click on add from library. And the emails that we're going to add are not a campaign or a blast. We have to first add the single email that you want to use. Now, technically, you could use anything in here you wanted to if you have permission to edit it. But I'm going to suggest right at the top, I have an email blank that you can edit and play with. So to add it, you would click on add to emails. And you'll get something that says email blast added to my emails. And now you can close this. And you'll see that I now actually have two of them in here. Well, once you get one in here, you can name it, you can rename it and so on. But I wanted to show you how to get it in here. So here's the next step and what's been confusing me all morning long. I want to edit this email. Well, I got to get out of the library, excuse me, close this. So now that I have this in here, I want to edit it. I cannot edit it by hitting preview. I cannot edit it by hitting these three dots over here, which tells me to duplicate it or delete it. So once you get it in here, you could duplicate it from here and not have to have it multiple times. The only way you can edit it is to click on the name of the email which I just did. And this page comes up. This page gives you a chance to set up the email and then build it. So we're going to set it up first. Edit setup. And I named it blank to set up. Well, if you send an email out to your clients and the subject line is blank to set up, they probably aren't going to open that. That's not very inviting. So we're going to type in this one. We're going to make it Greg's notice to all clients. Now, keep in mind what you're naming this is actually the subject line that they're going to see on the email. So you don't want to name it um, something like I just did, right? We might want to say Greg's notice. I'm having a birthday bash, a B-Day bash. Maybe you want to tell all your clients you're going to be out of town. Maybe you want to tell all your clients you're having a party for them at uh, Chicken Pickle, and you want all your clients to meet and mingle. Right below that, you have what's called a preview text. And your preview text is, if it comes up in the email, you know, there's those little lines below it that says, this email is about, we're having March B-Day dinner shortly. And below that, do I want the header, the footer, and the signature? Now, I turned off the footer on purpose because I think it looks messy and I don't like it. You can always turn it on, take a look at it, come back and uncheck it later, okay? But for me, when I set these up, I did it that way and I'm gonna save it. Now I wanna edit the email content. This brings up what I've set up as a blank. And obviously it's not gonna say your brokerage, it's gonna say better homes and gardens. And you have a picture and they have these semi-annual semi do doggy spa day where you're going to do it at, and all of that. Now, these things are all editable by you. You can click on this and say, I don't want it to say semi-annual doggy spa day. I want it to say birthday bash. So I highlight my text and go birthday bash. And now, I'm, now I can go down and keep editing. Or you may say, I don't like this layout at all. I want to see what other templates might look like. Change template. Well, they have a complete blank. 
they have a blank template. They have used BHG, a great place to work. They have these other templates that are newsletters like. They have new listings, recruiting, and so on. And you can take any of these. This is an animated GIF, by the way. And you can use that template, change pictures, change the title, and so on. So that makes sense so far. Well, I don't want to change template. I like what I got. One big picture and a little bit of talking. And I'm guessing that when you look at this sign up now, you may have to go down and figure out where it's sending that to. I don't know if it does or not. So you'd have to try one and see. Since it says URL, da, 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 you may have to. But you'll also notice up here, I can send myself a test or I can preview it and see what it looks like when I roll it out. And there's my logo, my name, the birthday bash, where it's going to. Let's see, that's got a HTTP, so I'm gonna have to change that because it doesn't work the way I want, but you kind of get the drift. And if you don't wanna sign up now, you could put hit reply to this email. So, that's the way you customize an email. You have to make it in your email. And I'm going to continue. I've set it up. I've previewed it. And I can send a test right here. And now I can save. Well, I want to edit the name because I don't want eblast blank to go out. I want to put birthday bash. Before I move on, are there questions about how to get there, how to open it up, the editing you can do? Let's see, we got something in the chat. They're recorded and accessible. Yes, they are, Joel. Thank you. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the campaign box. Well, I'm going to save it. And now you see I have an email there called birthday bash, but that's in my emails. I still can't really do anything with it other than I've saved it and I could open it up next year. I could edit it some more. I could use it later, but I want to make an e-blast out of it. So I'm going to go to e-blast. Now again, I've got this happy birthday email, but I don't want to do that. And you'll note, I've got a blast blank for you to create from. Again, you have to pull it in, e-blast, and pull it in from add from library. And in the library, I believe, oh, those are the only two you can pull in, sorry. Campaigns. Is that where I've got the e-blast? It'll take a while. Or sequential blank or whatever you want. You're going to pull it in here. And then for this one, I'm going to click on the name. Again, the name, not the preview, not the line. And I hope I can do this because it came from the parent company. Nope, it won't let me. Yep, it will let me. So let me go back and show you how I got there. Anything you pull in here that's already in here or you want to add, happy birthday email. And you click on the name, not preview, not the line, the name. And once I'm in here, it's already set up, really, but I'm going to change it eventually because I got to. And I want to change my e-blast. When I click on that, it brings up a list of my emails that I put in here that I want to drop in a new name on. It may take a minute to get all these to populate. 
because I'm seeing my names up at the top. But shortly, that's going to come in over here, the birthday batch right there. I've selected the email I want to go out. I want to save it. Come on, save. I want to create a list to send it to. I want to add recipients. Well, when I click on recipients, it brings up a list of everybody I have in here and I could send to everyone or if I have groups. Let's say I had March birthday set up in here. I could have a group of everybody with a March birthday and send it out. If I wanted to have a doggy wash day at the park, I could select one to send to everybody I have, all my people, or I could send it out to uh, people who have animals and so on. So this organization of your list is something that takes a while, but you'll notice right at the top, all contacts. If you were gonna send out an invitation to everybody in here, that's how you would do it. And now everyone will be added over here. So I'm gonna cancel that. And once I'm done, I would, since I have no people here, I can't send the campaign. You would hit send and it would start sending out the emails. So to me, what we've just kind of talked about is, or we've spent the last few weeks talking about in, Engage, I want to have some drip campaigns I can send to people. I want some plans that will happen. And then I want a way to send a pretty email to everybody in my sphere. And this is kind of a good way to do it. Part of the reason it's a good way is if you get in your desktop outlook and you make a nice pretty email and you send it to everybody in your sphere of influence, once you send out a certain number of emails, your email provider is going to say, oops, this must be spam and cut you off. This company will take the emails and parcel it out over a certain amount of time. And they also have themselves designated as a good email server who does not spam people. So it keeps them from getting marked on spam services better than other ones. So that's what I wanted to cover today. Plus, any questions you guys had about things we've covered today or in the past? Man, either I'm a really good teacher, B, you guys are really smart, or C, you're so overwhelmed you don't know what you're going to do until you go back and play with it. Or all the above. Well, I have a question. Microphone, microphone. them out of my emails into my e-last. I've downloaded it from the library to the emails, but then how do you get it over to the e-last? When you're in two. when you're in a e-blast, you have to bring something in. is your e-blast empty or do you have something I, I download I sent over the two that were in the library, but I thought you said we could bring them from the library to the emails and then get them over to the e-blast. And first you have to get them in the emails. They're in there. And then you have to have an e-blast something in here. What do you have in there? I did the happy birthday. Okay. So when you open happy birthday. Oh, so those don't actually move over. Right. Okay. You have to open happy birthday by clicking on the name. And this is the part that confused me all morning. <laughs> and then I say, what's my e-blast? Well, there's what I set up, but I want to change the content to the email I just brought over. And I go click on change e-blast. And then there is a drop down that says, well, what email do you want to send with this? And so I want to send a testimonial request now. And I save, but they have to already be in my emails. And then right up here, I don't want to say this is happy birthday anymore. 
I want to add it the name. And I want this to be testimonial request. Yeah, I can't type. I don't care. And I save it. And you'll see it still says awaiting set setup because I haven't set a request list. I'm going to go ahead and add myself just because I want to. Uh, and here, I'm going to mess with Murray Gregor too. I'm going to send her one too. Now I've added some people. And I think now I can send it. But I got to figure, oh, I got to save the people. And now I can send the campaign. And you'll notice it's showing me what the email is going to look like. And I could go back and change this setup and add the footer if I wanted to see what it looks like. I just don't want it. I'm going to go ahead and send it. And so now I've just sent, you know, two people the same email, or I could send 100 people the same, same email. And now it's going to say I've sent out two and nobody's opened it yet. But notice also, it archived it. Because once you send an e-blast, it's not going to be waiting set up. It, you've already completed all the steps on it. I believe, and I'm going to click on it to double check, I could open this up, change the name, save it, e-blast. Now, once it's in here as sent, I can't edit it anymore because it's archived. So I have to have an unsent brokerage plan for you to use. Rename it, duplicate it. I can do that, which I don't think I can see because my, but that's how you have to do it, okay? Any other questions or comments? Okay. Tulio asked me a question yesterday. Tulio, I'm still working on it because there should be a button inside there that says post your listing to Facebook. That's not showing up yet. So I've asked them why not. We will get to that shortly. But if there are no other questions, I'm going to stop recording.